Hi, I'm Michael Despezio, one of the authors of HMH Science Dimensions, and today I'd like to model one of the lessons from this program. The activity begins with me profiling the performance expectations from NGSS. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to plan and conduct an investigation that provides evidence that feedback mechanisms maintain homeostasis. A lot of us have been teaching for a long time, and some of us have been doing inquiry-based and student-centered stuff, but the engineering aspect is brand new. It's something that I don't see a lot of. You're going to be working in teams of two, and you're going to be engaging in the three dimensions of learning. The first one is science and engineering practices. And specifically today, we're going to be looking at planning and carrying out investigations, which you are going to be doing. Plus, you're going to be engaging in argument from evidence. So you'll be collecting evidence and using that to make some sort of statement or support some sort of statement that you have. We'll also be looking at the big ideas, cross-cutting concepts, such as cause and effect, which are mechanisms and explanations, and stability and change. And the final dimension are the DCIs, or the disciplinary core ideas, and this is really the content part of what we're going to be covering. I'll also profile the task specifics so they know exactly what they need to focus on. Because remember, this is going to be self-directed, and it's up to these students to come up with a plan for the investigation. With curriculum that's meant to empower a student, I think that it can really boost their self-esteem and confidence, not only in one class, but in every class. You're going to be working at your lab bench, and each team of two will design and perform an investigation that provides evidence that exercise impacts the chemical process of respiration. I find it helpful to help them set the stage for developing their own steps by giving them some sort of framework of think about it ideas. So it helps them really develop an effective activity on their own that can address the problem that I present them with. What types of stress might exercise place on the body's metabolism? Think about it. When you exercise, what are you doing to your body's metabolism? What do you need more of? And, yeah, you're going to need more energy, but think about chemically what that means, specifically what it means to cellular respiration. But I'm not going to go further. You're going to need to discuss that yourselves. You're going to be working in teams of two. You're going to be engaging in the three dimensions of science. And you're also going to be accessing the content that we have covered, plus use any extra resources that you might need to perform this investigation, which means you can go online, you can get extra data, or you can use reference books that you already have. Okay, it's time to do science. Let's do it. When the students are in the planning phase, it's important for you to circulate around the room. Listen to what they have to say and facilitate. Don't tell them what to do. Listen to their ideas, and if needed, guide them to an ideal investigative process. Why do you produce more carbon dioxide when you exercise? Because when you exercise, you're breathing in more, and so you're breathing out more. Why are you breathing in more? When does the timing begin? When you're starting the experiment, when you start blowing, when you start exercising? Remember, these activities need to be student-directed. Yep. You're there, but you're only there to help them come up with their own ideas that they can use to pursue scientific investigation. All right, ladies, what did you find? When we used exercise, it was faster than when we did it. Tell me about the times. How long did it take without exercise? Before exercising, it took 19.12 seconds, and then after the minute of exercising, it took 10.69 seconds. Wow, so that was like real results, and it seems to support some yeah sort of a hypothesis. So what's your claim? Um, that with an increased heart rate, you give off more carbon dioxide, which causes a decrease in time. I think the thought of having one right answer and everything else being wrong scares the majority of the students. So when you get the chance to say what you think is right and you have your evidence and data to prove that it's right, I think it's a, it's a better way of learning. When you have more minds getting put into the same topic, you could get things done more efficient because you're all striving for the same goal. I feel like all like videos, reading, and like labs that aren't as hands-on are still helpful, but I think my favorites are the ones where you really have to work to come up with an answer. That was great. You guys did the activity. I am impressed that all of you and every one of you really did get great results. Once you nail that down and you get that curriculum nailed down and you start using that, 
I don't want to say it becomes easier to become a teacher, but it becomes easier <laughs> to become a teacher. And above all, remember, this needs to be fun. The lab was very engaging and I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this lab. I had fun. And I had fun. <laughs> <laughs>